I would say that uh, realistically, change is a year away. One year away? Yes. Yes, sir. A couple of things. First of all, the current union agreement, how long is that term left on? Well, there are many. The, the municipal side has six contracts alone, and um, they, uh, um, I, my recollection was that uh, four of those contracts expire um, in uh, three years, and two of those contracts expire in two years. But keep in mind that not only are we representing the municipal side, but we're also incorporating our school employees. We're also covered by individual bargaining agreements under the school committee and the superintendent. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they need to become involved in those discussions also. The school, uh, I believe the school contracts, we have several also. Um, most of them expire in 2009. Uh, the teachers, I believe, expires in 2010. Okay. Yeah, two years after this fiscal year. What's the total count of town employees that are covered under the health insurance plan? Almost 600. Yep, 598. 598. 598. In terms of the projections for the fiscal years 2009 and 2010, did you factor in these types of increases and rates going forward? What sort of percentage? Of course. We, we, we would have factored in, um, uh, obviously we would not factor in reductions in costs sure. or something that has been negotiated. What we've done is we've established a trend and we've carried that trend forward to say that if, if nothing else changes, these are what our costs will be. And that's what we factored into our fixed cost budget. One thing that wasn't mentioned regarding insurance is that we have seen an increase in enrollment because the town plan for partners is pretty lucrative and you know, on occasion people elect to uh, sign up for it that may not have been on it originally as their spouse may have changed a, a job and you know you elect the cheapest solution to your health insurance. Woman in the back? What percentage does the town pay? 70. Yes. Bob, could you go back one slide, <coughs> just for clarification? This one, or? That one. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Um, and I agree that maybe for town meeting, I, I know that individually, a lot of people find it easier to do in $100,000 increments because it's much easier to multiply it than you had been try to back down from 450 and say, okay, where am I? If you know how much how many dollars per hundred thousand then it's it's a pretty simple now but the tax bill comparison versus the chart that shows the impact on the overrides there's a difference between in this slide of FY07 and 10 of approximately fourteen hundred if I can read it, fourteen hundred dollars. Thirteen fifty-four. Thirteen ninety-four. Thirteen fifty-four. Okay. <coughs> and the just from the override is six hundred and thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. That's the over, That's the difference over the whole three years. That's a cumulative. Right. I understand that, but the difference between the six hundred and the thirteen hundred are all of the rest of the debt service and, and normal um, annual increases. Right, and, and one of the areas that... Uh, Just to clarify with this... Yeah. The, exempt, the exempt debt, which is part of the uh, dark blue, it's, it's built in there. Uh, in 9 and 10, there's still some debt that's being converted <coughs> to permanent debt, and that will have an impact. But there's two sides of that. Actual the school, not all of the debt has been processed, and the reason for it is that there was still hope of getting state aid on that project. And if we do, we get a lump sum payment. And if we converted it to debt, then like we have run into with the Hood School payment, we get it over a period of time. So that isn't shown up 
as uh, permanent debt, which means we're not paying the principal. And if we were to make the shift to principal, then it would have an impact in FY209 or 210 in the area of exempt debt. And, uh, that would have an impact on is there anything? Is there anything um, of significance? That, well, it's all significant, but that is falling off of debt service in the next several years? Well, there's one item that I think the high school, some of the things just are coming off either this year or next. And the library should be too. <laughs> I had a slide of uh, the exempt debt, and, and 2009 was a dip, but that may be filled with the conversion of bonding for the balance of the batch. What's the, do you know what the percentage of the full bonding on the batch that is well, about currently on the uh, debt According service? to Joe Tassoni this morning, he said there's about $9 million that has not been converted. Now, that's not just a batch. The batch number is around six. Craig is looking it up right now. Um, so there's the batch, there's part of the police station, there's the modulars, they haven't been a million dollars for modules. In fact, we just voted tonight uh, on that uh, to, uh, to permit a 15-year uh, debt service on the modules. <coughs> yep. uh, yeah, the uh, amount that's out on the Batchelder School right now is, hang on a second, Six million is one piece, and the second piece is four million. So there's ten million dollars out on the bachelor school right now. Ten. Oh, <coughs> hang on, ten. There's more than there's there. There's another piece. No, I showed I showed ten. Ten. So the bond was for. I showed ten million dollars out on the bachelor school right now. Four. Bonded in permanent debt right now. So eight or nine. There's about eight or nine still so sitting there. On the batch. Yeah. Right. And then the police station? And the um, police station. Permanent bonding, Trish? Um, no, we, we have some permanent debt issued on it. It's uh, It looks like it's just over $5 million. It's uh, about $5,025,000. I, I, I suspect that uh, Joe's number of about $9 million is probably about what city that hasn't been converted. Any other questions? One more question. Um, you commented about uh, right in the very beginning um, about what we can do, do about long long term, um, and, and it increase uh, fees, i.e. trash. Um, what would the increase in the trash fee be um, to have a zero impact on the budget, Debbie? You seem to have a number the other night. <laughs> um, I believe it would increase the trash fee by about twenty dollars per quarter. Twenty dollars per quarter. So eighty dollars per household. Twenty dollars per quarter. It's forty-five. Uh, I'm sorry. Ten dollars. Ten. Ten. So <laughs> we'll go from forty-five dollars a quarter to fifty-five, and that would. That would fund completely fund trash. Right, and it would alleviate. It would do two things. One, it would alleviate one hundred twenty thousand dollars. It would. That that does not completely fund trash forever. It takes it out of the municipal budget. Uh, what that would do is, in conjunction with some of the Neswick um, funds, um, take it off of the municipal um, side of the equation and put it between uh, the Neswick uh, stabilization fund and the homeowner. So at some point, right. additional fees will be required to cover the Neswick contribution when it runs out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hey. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I want to bring up the topic that you asked. You said you were going to ask for some advice on whether to let us select them to go ahead and propose a three-year override. And my first comment of Mr. Walpin's first statement tonight about this being the first time he'd heard about a three-year plan took me a little bit back. I, I don't understand what your implication was there. Um, first I heard about the long-term planning was a year ago at town meeting when we concluded town meeting right. and you all <laughs> promised that you would come back and do some long-term planning. So 
that's the first time I heard about it. That's a year ago. And if, if we haven't talked about it since then, shame on us. Uh, I don't know where that's coming from. But I want to make a comment. Yeah, um, yeah my, my comment would be this. Of course, we all know that there's been discussion about it for years later. I think that it was really not, in fact, it was not even definite in our Friday morning meeting of, of the town financial planning group exactly what the impact of this override would be or exactly what the school department's budget would be for the override. So that is recent information to the finance committee, the actual numbers, okay? Not the idea of a three-year budget. But in any broad terms, we, of course, had a, a fairly decent understanding of it. Well, then I'd be careful how you say it, because that's exactly how it sounded to me. Well, and, and I think that that does not, that does not go well to the taxpayer, that mm -hmm. here we are, like, at the last minute, coming up with something, you know, off the seat of our pants, because that's I what was, it sounded like was, to me. If, if I was misunderstood, I apologize. But that's exactly what I meant, that, yes, there was talk about it a year ago, but we haven't seen the specifics until now. Okay. Well, my general comment is, Bob, I think, congratulations. That was one of the finest bits of presentation of long-term planning that I've ever seen at any public meeting before. That was excellent. And, uh, you know, if the thing goes, this is the way to sell it. Well, keep in mind, I did say it's still a work in progress. The school, the school department is still, hasn't taken a formal vote on years 2009 and 10, is that correct? Right. correct. Well, I'm listening to the music, not necessarily okay. focusing yeah. on the words here, but <laughs> good, good job, okay? I like the tool, okay? okay. I'm, I'm dancing to this music, this is good. Um, and. Um, in particular, a couple things, uh, you know, one of your very first slides, you know, why do we have a revenue shortfall example? And I, I don't think you can, you can shout loud enough, and I think all of you have to. I mean, the school committee's been saying it, um, you know, for the selectmen, for the finance committee, you know, the, the issue of the health insurance, everybody can relate to that. This is a problem that every family in town has. And, you know, how do we get into this? And the more that we can just lay out those cold, hard facts, uh, and let people know, you know, how much of this, our Prop 2 and a half override is just completely wiped out by health insurance, leaving, what, a couple hundred thousand dollar increase or something for the schools. I think it has to come from everybody at the front of this room and anybody else who can say it to say, look, we just can't function like this. And this is not a one-year problem. This is a two, three, four, five, you know, this is a big long-term problem and we all need to work together to fix it. And you said that beautifully. I think we can say it over and over again. Um, the, the um, you know, three years ago, it, was, it wasn't anywhere near as formal as this, but three years ago when we passed the override, you know, in my opinion, I think people really did respond to, um, uh, scolded Jerry for this one, but Jerry kind of promised three years ago that this is all the money we need for the next three years. I thought it was a dumb comment at the time, but <laughs> it worked out. It would be my first one. Okay. Um, and, uh, but, but I think that my point is that I think people really did respond to it. I think people appreciated the long-term approach that you were taking. Um, and I think the more we can make it clear to people that, you know, that you can do it all you want to get, you know, make this go away for one year, but it's not through anybody's mismanagement. There is just a structural issue here that's not going to get fixed as far as anyone knows anytime soon. So let's just do the homework now, lay it out for people, show them what you showed, you know, uh, you know work out the details, get, get everybody to agree to their piece here. Um, but I think this, for some people that are certainly going to gag on a big number, no question about that. Um, I don't think they'd be inclined to vote for, for an override, whether it was one year or three years. Uh, but I think for people that can get their arms around this, I think they would appreciate the fact that they don't have to go through this process every single year for the next three years. And I think we have the evidence that it worked three years ago. The town passed it. It was su successful. It wasn't a, as formal as a presentation as this that we're going to do with three years but it was kind of implied that this was going to carry at least the school department for the next couple of years. And you know, we just barely did it, you know, with some, you know, oh, focus, focus last year, but um, we pulled it off. So I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a great approach. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, trying to think of objections that I've heard from paying attention to selectmen's meetings and, and other comments about why you wouldn't do this, um, uh, you know, Phil, you've articulated it pretty clearly in terms of your fuzziness with the, uh, pro uh, you know, revenue projections. But, you know, I would just have to think that, you know, all of us, and I think townspeople could relate too, you know, we all have to plan. Um, you know, Joey's college education, you know, your retirement, wh whatever it is.